well, we've established the problem. What do we do about it? So if you were a grower and you you suspect that you have an infected plant, what are your options? Right. So there's there's many things growers can do. I mean, the first thing they need to do for sure is confirm that they've got hop laden. So whatever plant they're dealing with, uh, most likely it's a flowering plant because that's usually when you see it and they send it off for testing. The first thing would be to work backwards and try to figure out where did where did I get my my clones from from for that particular plant or that particular genotype? What did I did I grow it indoors? Did I purchase it from someone else or did I start it from seed? Uh, and once you sort of work backwards, you can say to yourself, all right, let's assume it came from clones within your own facility. That means the mother plant definitely has hop latent. Mm. So you work backwards, you then test your mother plants, uh, depending on how big they are and so on. We can we can talk about sampling strategies, but you test your mother plant. And obviously, if the mother plant is infected, um, the, the bad news is that I would say it's got to be it's got to be thrown away. You've got to get rid of it. Um, there's really no proven ways right now to to rescue a, a plant that has hop latent in it. I mean, we, we've talked about Mary stem culture and tissue culture and so on. It's possible, but it hasn't been demonstrated uh, on a, on a high level, on a high scale, that you can you can rescue a mother plant that's got hop latent. So if you've proven that it's your mother plant, then obviously you get rid of that. Mm. Um, the the other possibility is that it picked it up. Um, when the plant was in veg. So let's say you're vegging on a table and if you're using hydroponics, then you've got water or nutrient solution moving between plants. Uh, we've shown and others have shown that it can move with water, with recirculating water. And so the, a veg plant that's that's maybe two weeks old could potentially have picked up hop latent through the root system and, and the, the viroid then makes its way into the plant that way. And then of course, the last alternative is a seed. If you started from seed, uh, you didn't test the plant that came off the seed, it could be that that that, that gave rise to your um, infected flowering plant. So, so it's it's a it's a detective sort of a, a detective process or you know a, a process of elimination deciding where where did it come from. You, you need to know that that's number one. Yeah, and I think you kind of answered my next question, but I think it's a good good thing to hammer home there really doesn't seem to be any sort of treatment or kind of remediation options available yet right yeah if you've got a heavy heavily infected or even an infected mother plant uh, now you know people have tried and people are trying taking cuttings from different parts of the, of the big plant so you could right. you could definitely do that you could take them from the top the actively growing you could take it from the side the bottom but then you have to go through and test all of those to see if by chance, and really it is chance, if by chance you were able to get a clone that was free of, of hop latent. You know, when the viral gets in, and, and we, we can discuss this now, the first place it goes is down into the roots. Right. So let's say let's say um, I infected it through a cutting. I, I went with my tools and I transferred some sap onto a cut surface. And uh, the first place it goes is down into the roots. And that takes about two weeks. So let's say two weeks after... Uh, it was introduced, it goes down into the roots. And then from the roots, it, it's moved upward. And the reason it's moved upward is it, it sort of follows the flow of, of sugar, start, uh, sugars that are being produced uh, by photosynthesis in the plant. And that usually is towards the actively growing shoots, which are the young shoots. So you'll find it in the young shoots probably around four weeks mm -hmm. after that in, initial infection occurred. And then it starts moving around the plant. So let's say by, by six weeks, it's now pretty much everywhere. But there are cases where, you know, a branch gets missed. You've got yeah. a, a disease plant and all of a sudden, you know, a, he a healthy branch on one side. And I think I have a photo uh, in that presentation. We can come back to it in a second. For some reason, that branch got missed. If you're lucky enough, you can get a, a, a cutting out of that, a clone out of that, and you may have escaped um, hop late, at least in, in, that particular, in that particular plant. Um, so it's not a uniform distribution throughout. And so some producers will go through and take clones from various parts of the of the mother plant, in the hopes that they can find uh, a few that don't have the uh, the virus.